So here's the two figures side by side. As you can see, they're both very similar figures. This one, the big negative is that its arms are really long. Posability wise, they're pretty much the same. They've got both have these swivel arms, and they've got and this one has ball joint has ball jointed uh, elbows and a ball jointed hand, which are very nice. Not to mention he's got knees and legs, and his head turns a bit. And as for the bigger Grimlock, he's actually got a bit less posability, because he's got the swivel joints, he only has just a straight hinge for the elbow, and his wrists rotate, and his hands open. His head turns, but the head is blocked by the collar, which isn't that big a deal. And then of course, he's got leg posability, and even though these are ball jointed, even though these aren't ball jointed here, but they don't bend very far, not as far as the other one. And he's got to swivel here on the legs, and he's got full knees. So really, I'd actually say that this one is better posability, the activators. Even, and he even has his arms fold up like this, so he's actually capable of more poses than this Grimlock is. Where this one, however, fails is the arms are too long. I mean, this one's got that issue as well with the Grimlock, if you extend the arms all the way. They're very long, but and it's roughly in proportion, but the difference is, is that you can fold these up so they don't look very long, whereas you can't on the other one. I'm just going to compare the backs at the side and the back. This one, keep in mind that this one is very show accurate in how it looks. I really like how it looks. It fits the animated aesthetic very well. And it's pretty much the same transformation as G1 Grimlock, with some tweaks here and there. And this one, on the side, it doesn't look quite as impressive, because you can see all the Dino Mode kibble just hanging off the back right here. Whereas this one has none of that, except for the kibble which he has in the show. And the Dino Head up here, and the piece of the flaps back here, which are an intentional G1 homage. This one has all that as well. But yeah, this one stands a lot better than in robot mode than in uh, beast mode. And uh, if you're going for the cheap Grimlock, I'd say go for the Activator's version. It's a very, very respectable uh, iteration of the character. It came out within the last few months, I believe. But yeah, it's a very good iteration of Grimlock. One of the best Activators out there. I've only got a few of them, but I really like this one. And... However, the issue, of course, is size. As you can see, he's only about half the size of this Grimlock. And the Voyager Grimlock, well, he's a T-Rex. Size does matter. I don't have any of the animated Dinobots here for comparisons, but I can still do a few other ones. I'm going to compare Grimlock to uh, Activator's Bumblebee. There he is right there. Here's the uh, Voyager compared to the Activator's Bumblebee. And here is the Activator's Grimlock compared. As you can see, scale doesn't really cut it. This Grimlock is way out of scale with Bumblebee. But they're both good Activator's figures. So I wouldn't begrudge you getting a Grimlock. And to do a second comparison, mind you, this isn't a very good scale comparison either. But here he is with the Deluxe Bumblebee, which happens to be very tall. He's almost the height of Grimlock, which again shows that a bigger Grimlock is better in this case. And, yeah, they're both good figures, but yeah, Grimlock is uh, pretty tall for Voyager, because Bumblebee is just a tall deluxe, period. And I'm just going to do a last generation comparison of Grimlock with the uh, Classics Optimus Prime. As you can see, they're both roughly the same height. So yeah, Grimlock's about the average size of a Voyager. He's no bulkhead, he's no lug nut. He's a decent height, he's got a lot of heft in the box, takes up a lot of space. My final conclusion, the pros and cons of these figures, well, you have to weigh it again, as I said, based on a price point. If you want something that's just cheap, something that the kids will enjoy and have fun with, and that's not very hard to transform, I would go with the Activator's Grimlock. He's really easy to reverse the transformation on, and he's got plenty of play value and posability. However, this Grimlock, well, me Grimlock King, 
He's a big Grimlock. He turns into a giant T-Rex, which is awesome. And he turns into a sweet-looking robot, which is an update of his G1 self, which is also awesome. Plus, he has the cool fiery sword. And yeah, he looks pretty much like a great update of G1 Grimlock again. So, in the end, I would recommend the Voyager for the animated fan who knows how to transform the figures. And if you've got older kids who are more advanced than the activators, he's still a good beginner figure because he's very simple to figure out, very simple to transform. Which is, normally you would think that is bad, but in animated, simple is generally good in the case of a figure like Grimlock, who is this good looking in both modes. And with that, General Techno signing off.